Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and I'm now answering question number two from the Mechanics M1 paper from June 2023. This is from the Edexcel International A Level um, Board, um, and this is about vectors. So it says a particle P rests in equilibrium on a smooth horizontal plane. A system of three forces. F1, F2, and F3, where F1 equals 3Ci plus 4Cj. So I'm going to rewrite F1 and F... I'm going to change the color a bit, so it's a bit different. I know you guys have to write in blue, but I like to make it a bit more. So plain here, yeah, okay. So I'm going to write these as column vectors. So F1 is basically 3Ci, so I'll write that on the top, and 4Cj, and F2 is minus 14i, so minus 14 on top, and 7 underneath. I just like to write them like that. Okay, so that's F1 and F2, and F3 are also applied to B, to, uh, you know, to uh, to this particle P. Um, we know that P remains in equilibrium. That's important here. It remains in equilibrium. Okay, which means basically that the resultant force is equal to 0. Find F3 in terms of C, I, and J. So my answer is going to be here in terms of C, I, and J, right? So in the end, I'm going to write it as in the I and J form, but I'm going to keep them in column vector form for now, right? So let's say F3 is equal to X, Y. I have to find what they are, right? But what I know, because they're in equilibrium, what I know is that the resultant force is equal to zero, and the resultant force is basically the sum of these forces, F1 plus F2 plus F3. The resultant force must equal zero. So if I know the resultant force is equal to zero, then what I can do is I can basically just write these vectors, add it together to equal zero. So I have 3C, 4C, plus minus 14, 7, plus X, Y, is equal to 0, 0. So from this, I can formulate an equation for i, which is 3c minus 14 plus x equals 0. And for j, I can say 4c my plus 7 plus y equals 0. OK. And in fact, I can do it even in a better way. I don't even have to put this. Um, you know, I can just put, I can just do this, in fact. I'll just I'll just call F3 F3. It's, it's probably easier to do it this way. Okay, we can just scrap that. Just call this F3. And then we can just add these together. So we can say that you're, you're going to have 3C minus 14. You're going to have 4C minus or plus 7. Plus F3 is equal to 0. So F3 is equal to basically the opposite of this. When you subtract this from both sides, you'll have a minus of these. So it'll be 14 minus 3C and minus, uh, you can say minus um, seven, minus 4C minus 7. Okay. Minus 4C minus 7. So we can therefore say in terms of I and J and C, F3 is going to be, say, minus 3C plus 14I plus... We can say if we want, I'll write it like this first, minus 4C minus 7J. We can leave it like that. Or we can write here, minus 3C plus 14I, and you can have minus 4C plus 7J like that if you want. Okay, both of them are fine. Okay, that's, that's how we can write our answer. That's F3 in terms of I, C, I, and J. Okay, now part B says the force F3 is removed from the system. Given that C equals 2, find the size of the angle between the direction of I and the direction of the resultant force acting on P. Okay, so the resultant force now is going to be just F1 plus F2. F3 is removed from the system. And we know that C is equal to 2. So we can say F1 is going to be... 3 times 2, which is 6i, and 4 times 2, which is 8j, and f2, as we know, is minus 14 and 7. 
So what we can say here is the resultant force is equal to um, is equal to the sum of these two. So it's going to be six eight plus minus fourteen seven. So six minus fourteen is minus eight, and eight plus seven is fifteen. So this is the resultant force. So the resultant force is minus eight. 15. So we want to find the size of the angle between the direction of I and the direction of the resultant force acting on P. Now the direction of I is horizontal. This is the direction of I. Okay, it's a horizontal line. Okay, that's the direction of I. Okay, that's the direction of I. And minus 8 for 15, you've got to go 8 to the left and 15 up. So let me just um, change this position of these a bit. So you're going to go 8 to the left and 15 up. So it's going to be something like this. Okay. This would be the direction of FR. Okay. Minus 8 plus 15. And I'm going to actually just put uh, some dotted lines to show that. Okay. So that's minus 8. And that's plus 15. That's a right angle. So that's going to be 8 to 15 in terms of the magnitude. So the angle between I and this is this angle over here. That's the angle we have to find. Okay, we need to find this angle. So to find that angle, let's find this angle X first. Okay, so this is 8, which is the, um, the length of this side. Let me just... Um, okay, so I can find this angle by using tangent. I can say that x equals the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent, which is 15 over 8. So x is equal to, get our calculator, inverse tan of 15 over 8. And that gives us 61.927. 61.927 degrees. So theta, therefore, is going to be, as they make a straight line, 180 minus 61.927. So we take our answer that we got. And we do 180 minus the answer, which gives us 118.072. 118.072. Um, it didn't tell us how to round it, so we do to one decimal place. So theta equals 118.1 degrees that's the angle between this the direction of this vector and i okay direction of i i is in the positive direction this way and this is the direction of our vector so our, our angle is going to be this angle over there so you don't just write the acute angle you write this obtuse angle because our vector is going in that direction we want to find the angle between that and positive i not negative i okay so that answers part b of this question all right so that's that and now for part C, it says the mass of P, so let's, let's it says, okay, um, the mass of P is m kilograms, given that the magnitude of the acceleration is 8.5 meters per second squared, find the value of m. So we need to know the resultant force, which we worked out was minus 815. So we know that the resultant force is minus 815. Okay, so it says, given that the magnitude of the acceleration is 8.5, find the value of m. So we know that the resultant force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So the acceleration, so the resultant force is minus 815, and that's equal to the mass, which is m, times the acceleration, which has a magnitude of 8.5. So I'll write 8.5 here. So therefore, what we can do is, we can, um, well, we, we shouldn't write it like this because that's not, Written, that's we've got the magnitude, we haven't got the acceleration as a vector. So what we will do is we'll take the, the resultant force and we find its magnitude, which is going to be the square root of 8 squared plus 15 squared. You'll have to worry about, about minus signs because they're going to be positive when you square them. So you're going to take this, you're going to do 8 squared plus 15 squared, which gives you 17. So this is equal to 17 newtons. Okay. So therefore, we can say that the resultant force, its magnitude is 17, equals the mass, which is m, times the acceleration, which is 
So the mass is going to be 8.5, or 17 divided by, sorry, 8.5. So the mass is 17 divided by 8.5. So the mass is equal to 17 divided by 8.5. That gives us 2. 2 kilograms. So basically, m equals 2. m equals 2. And there's the answer for the question part C. And that concludes this question. Okay, from the June 2023 paper, this is question number two. Um, this is from the M1 paper. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear over here. Other questions from the topic of vectors in M1 from um, Edexcel can be found in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. And if you watch the video that is linked over here, you can find... Um, other material from my channel that you might be looking for will tell you how to navigate it and find it easily. Thank you for watching and see you soon.